Hi. In this clip, I'm going to explain how to use real-world data uh, to uh, help uh, make a Delft 3D grid and bathymetry. Uh, first, let's have a quick look at the formats of such data. So I'm going to navigate to a folder where I have some data. Let's see, it is a bit of a search usually on my PC. So I will go to lectures module seven. Data bathymetry clip. I've prepared some files here. We have a LDB, a land boundary file. Let's have a look at what that looks like so a land boundary file you can have asterisk will denote a comment line and then it can consist of a number of blocks with a block name four characters the number of points and a number of columns and that should be two for a land boundary and so you can have an arbitrary number of such blocks you can also within a block uh, separate, uh, let's say, put your pen up or separate two sections by uh, by a, a no value uh, of uh, minus nine nine nine. So that's the land boundary. Then we also have x y z files, and that's even simpler format. And that is just three uh, three columns uh, of x, y, and z. It can be comma separated. I think another example is um, it can also be separated by spaces. Doesn't matter. Okay. So those are the files. You can have leave them separate or you can combine them all into, uh, into one file uh, as, uh, if, if you prefer that. But we'll leave them uh, separate for now. So then um, I'm opening, uh, I'm opening uh, Delft 3D, huh? we have a menu for that. Um, and the first thing obviously that I do, uh, I start in this uh, this main menu first thing i always do is select a working directory and that is in this case this one bathymetry clip um, so i select that folder and then i go to grid and first i create a, a grid uh, that is steered by the land boundary and the samples I'll show you how to do that. So it is a very simple example, uh, but uh, we'll so first of all, you load all the data you want to use to help construct your grid. So that is, and that is under File Attribute Files, Open Land Boundaries. You get Holland. You see here a land boundary of the whole of the Netherlands. Um, then you open uh, samples. The samples are the X, Y, Z depth values. Huh? So open samples. And first, I'll take this one, Yarkus. This is the yearly. Uh, profile measurements in the Netherlands, but only focused on this small area here. I zoom in with my uh, mouse roller. And if I think this is getting a little bit thin, these little points in RGF grid, it is standard to have these rather small points. Um, but you can set that under settings sizes. The dot size is set at two by default, but you can make it uh, six, and then it's three times bigger, and then we can see it a little bit better. 
So this is the standard yearly data. For some reason, this uh, section is missing. I don't know why. Um, but that year, something must have gone wrong with that uh, profile. Um, then we go to uh, uh, load more samples. So we also have uh, samples from the Coast 3D campaign, uh, attribute files, open samples, and that is the ship bathy. That's this one. See, the ship was rather deep draft, so it didn't get too close to the shore. But they also had uh, an instrument, a big, big three three wheel instrument a bit like very much like the crab in uh, in the uh, United States so here it's called it's called the wasp or wasp and that has open samples that have the wasp pathy so that's this part here okay well it is nicely aligned and doesn't seem to be too conflicting it's all from the same year anyway and so what we see here is that the the red colors that's the june goes up to 23 meters and it goes down to uh, to well 10 15 meters maybe 10 meters something here so let's assume we want to make a grid that is aligned with the coast. And in this case, it's very simple because the coast is almost straight. But uh, let's uh, use the general method that is uh, to create uh, splines. And from the splines, we create the grid and then we uh, modify the grid. So first, we do edit splines new and then let's say i want to make sure that i my model includes the dry beach or or the, let's say the dune foot uh, it doesn't have to go over the dune in this case um, so i'll just make it click i'll follow, let's say, the dune front. And I hope you can see this. Um, so this is to make it. Um, I can modify this. This one is maybe should go a little bit. Insert point, move point, I can click this and put it a little bit more to this side okay so that's one and this is a new polygon oh don't forget you end uh, one spline with your right mouse and then you go new polygon you go we'll put the c word limit here and right mouse again now notice that the start of a spline is with a fat dot and the uh, end of it has a skinny dot so um, and you have to make all the splines in a consistent direction now the next spline is going to be in this direction i want to be within my data so I do like this, it can be straight lines. And here again, I want to make it, what you want to do is to make it as orthogonal as possible, the first go. Right mouse to stop, we go again to new polygon, do the same here. And that is uh, how I get my first uh, 
valid splines and I could start yeah, creating a grid from this. But I can also make more splines first, uh, for instance, to focus things on the near shore. I could already add one more spline over here. And to have a bit of a focus in the uh, in the area of interest, I can add another spline here and one over here. And you'll see what the effect is of that. Now I don't like the way I made that one. So I modify it. I first click to make the whole spline active, and then I click to move the point. Now, if I'm happy with this, so I see that I've made all my splines in a consistent direction again, then very advisable to save your splines. You do that with export. No, attribute files, save splines. And so this is the IGM. Now, what am I going to do? You can, from splines, you can generate a grid. Operations, change splines into grid. Now, if I just do that, you get this. By default, it uh, takes three subdivisions in both directions. But you can make it different. For instance, in settings, general, there you have the M refinement factor and the N refinement factor. M is the first direction I chose, that was the long shore, and N is the cross shore. So, for instance, I could make it uh, 30 and and 30 in the other, or let's say uh, 40 in the other direction. Okay, then if I do the same action, change splines into grid, you see I already have a, a grid that is um, changed in these in this way. And you see that because of the distribution of the splines, it has sort of done a gradual refinement here, and it also has done a rather gradual refinement in this direction. So this is pretty okay already. Um, we can have a look at some of the properties of our grid. And in order to do that, we better turn the samples off. So view samples hide. And then view grid property. Then we can look at the orthogonality. And now this should be somewhere less than 0 0.1, but uh, well, and you'll read the manual how, what, what it really should be. You see, it's not completely okay. But what we can do is operations, orthogonalize grid, and there you see we're now below 0 0.01, uh, which is pretty OK. Now, do we also have the resolution we want? Um, let's see. View, grid property, and we have the M size. So this is in this direction. 
the minimum size is about 12 meters and the other direction so the uh, cross shore resolution is the end size and that goes down to six meters so it's very nice and fine actually it's maybe a bit too fine for our purposes now uh, so it might be uh, a little bit a uh, bit less than that uh, for instance and what we can do is settings general we can set the refinement factor back to two okay and we can do d edit regular grid d refine grid locally so what you can do is go from here to there and d refine it by a factor two yeah? so that is if you and also here if we think we have a lot of grid cells on the almost dry beach here and like this we can de-refine it now what we do not want is these big changes in grid size so then we can use edit regular grid line smooth and you click one point and the, uh, another point you do a right mouse click and then you see it has a very nice smooth distribution so let's assume that this is now quite a nice uh, kind of grid for a small coastal model okay we export the grid And this is uh, where well, I'll just call it egg zero zero one. Save. Okay. That is one way to do it. There are many ways to do it, but this is a an easy way. Um, we can go out of. RGF grid, yes, we go to Quicken. So we produce a bathymetry. We file import the grid, this one, and we load all the samples. Import, no, attribute files, open samples. And we start with this one, and then open samples, that one, and open samples, this one. Okay. Now, what we see is that the resolution is in the crosshair direction is finer than uh, than our grid uh, but the longshore resolution and uh, there, there's some spaces in between those and we'll see that having such a hole is not a nice thing at all so we'll see how we can deal with that. Let's first see what happens if we just do the simplest thing is operations, triangular interpolation. That will just give us this bathymetry. And now if you look at this, this doesn't look very believable, huh? So what you see is that sometimes you have too much information. 
and uh, um, if I well, or we can just delete the depth yes um, too much information in this area for instance um, if we want and for instance these little things you might think that adds something to the to the data set but it's actually a distraction because it can attract uh, interpolation uh, if you're if you're here then then instead of interpolating between these uh, profiles which would be logical it it thinks well this is very close by as well so why not use this one uh, and that means that you get sort of islands here or weird shapes uh, um, so actually more information is not always better information uh, we'll see that if we uh, draw a polygon And we all know that this bar is more or less straight, and eh? we see it in the data. But how to tell the model to interpolate in such a way is you can create a polygon, uh, edit polygon new, and exclude these points. and try to exclude those points as well and just use these two areas now if i do triangular interpolation now then you see that it's doing a decent job of connecting the dots here between this one and and this this area yeah and we cannot do any better because uh, well there, there's just no data there but now if i delete this polygon i can make similar selections uh, and do the same thing again so and or and so on and so on so the best thing is to take sub parts of your grid and use the appropriate interpolation technique sometimes it's just better to to do a grid cell averaging and we can try that as well operations uh, delete polygon then we make a new polygon and then for instance here and oh yeah and an area that you've already covered will not be overwritten unless you really specify so but if we want to select this where we have nice detailed data, then what we can do, and you see in many places here, we have more data than we have hey, multiple data in a single grid cell. So a way to deal with that is to use grid cell averaging. Now this looks as if it has missed everything. That's also the way it is represented. So if you do view depth, not continuous shades, 
but colored dots, then you see that actually quite a few points are uh, have been interpolated. We're still within this polygon. And another useful option we have is to use internal diffusion. Let's see what happens then. And I go back to this view of uh, uh, the depth continuous shades. Ah, well, you see here it has done a nice job of filling in the spaces between uh, what it was, what it had in, uh, interpolated. But here it hasn't because it is totally missing the, these these points. So in that case, you can repair that by saying, again, I delete the polygon. I make a new polygon. And guess what? In this area, I'm, I'm going to throw away my previous interpolation data. So if I've defined a polygon and then I do operations delete depth, it will just delete the depth in that area. Okay. Now you see I'm still going to have a problem here. We all know because of what we see that this should be a straight dune foot. But if I um, do triangular interpolation here, you see it's making these here, it's too far away from this dune, so it's taking values here. So you get this undulation, which is not physical. So we undo that, we delete that depth. We have to place this polygon so that the intermediate points do not have an influence. And I actually have to insert some points here. To avoid using those kind of data. And so this may be a bit counterintuitive that you use, you get better results with, with less data eh, sometimes. But it's an important lesson. Uh, so here we do the triangular interpolation and now we get uh, uh, not a lot of results. Uh, I think, yeah, well, we cannot do much better. Uh, I think if we look at the dots here, colored dots. Okay, well, no, it's, yeah, it's got some data there. Well, and now operations defeat. Polygons. Now I'm getting a little bit tired of it and review depth continuous shades again. I I think by now the rest should be doable for the interpolation. So triangular interpolation. There we go. It uh, it's not perfect, but here it's not perfect because, well, actually, we just don't have enough data. Now, if you look at this and you say, okay, I don't believe this, yeah, there is also a way, and what you could also do in this area is just straighten this out. And let me 
and the final step show you how to do that uh, if you say okay I just don't believe what what has happened there um, then you can create a polygon and do something like this throw this part away operations delete depth and now there is a nice option where you say edit depth line sweep and then I just in this case I go from this point to that point and it's just getting me straight and parallel contours okay it's not perfect but it will do and you could smooth that out a little bit and anyway so if we now take away the samples And you see this uh, looks like a reasonably consistent uh, bathymetry and there's some structure in here not a whole lot there's a rib channel here and uh, and there is some 3d structure in in this uh, delete the polygon again and now I can save the bathymetry. File, export depth. Ah, now wait a minute. So I'll, one thing you will notice is this is egg underscore pause up what does it mean these z values are positive upwards you see this is minus 15 or so huh? and this is plus 23 um, this is not the delf 3d convention uh, in XSpeed, you can actually choose uh, which uh, de definition you use, but in Delft 3D, you have to make it positive downward. So how do we do that? We convert this by using an operation here. Operation, combine depth and uniform value, and then multiply depth with the uniform value, and that yes for all points and we say it is minus one okay and now we have file export depth And we give it this name so that we do not get confused. And this concludes our definition of a grid and a bathymetry. So if we go to flow now, flow input, then for instance, we can under domain, we can open this grid. We can open the grid enclosure and we can open the bathymetry file, open, pause, down. And now if you look at the visualization area, you see indeed uh, that this is correctly seeing this as Z is 12 meters or this is deep, it's darker blue and etc. And the rest is as you know it.
Okay, this concludes this example.